Night Shift at the Graveyard. Rob woke to the sun shining faintly on his face. He opened his eyes, in time to see it disappear over a distant cloud. He had overslept again. He got off the couch to get his tools. During the day, he was a truck driver for a local lumbering company, but the pay wasn't very good. He recently got a job, clearing out the weeds at a local graveyard site. This was his first day working there, and he wanted to start early so he can clear out as much as possible before having to leave. Guess I won't make a good impression anymore, he thought to himself as he packed up his weeding tools and got into his pickup truck. He has had Beatrice, weird name for a pickup, right? For almost seven years now, he made sure to service her regularly and she served him well all these years. He drove down to the graveyard and met the keeper just closing up his office. Don't stay over too long, especially today. I don't know how much weird stuff usually happens at later hours like this, so be careful. You should have come earlier as agreed, the gravekeeper told him. Yeah, sorry I'm late. I won't stay over too long, Rob replied. Rob took the keeper's advice as a joke. He thought he was just trying to scare him, so he didn't think too much about it. All right then, see ya, the keeper replied as he walked off with a little limp. Rob picked up his tools and went through the rusted gate into the graveyard. He started spraying herbicide into the patches of weeds growing around the gravestones. He had to use a torch because everywhere was pitch black now. After about 30 minutes of spraying herbicides around, Rob started pulling the weeds out and gathering them in a sack. He came across a grave that looked to have some triangular sign with an eye at the center of the triangle and some words scrabbled at the top of the sign in a red letter that read, would you like to join me? He leaned in to have a closer look and noticed the letters were scribbled in blood. He backed up a little, his heart beating a little fast now. He looked around, noticing that the graveyard was now covered in a thick fog. He looked over the gravestone again, but he couldn't see the sign or the letter anymore. He didn't notice a hole open up just to the side of the gravestone. A large decaying hand shot up and grabbed his leg. He shouted and pulled away with such force, his torchlight falling to the ground. Would you like to join me? A deep echoing voice asked him. He picked up his torch, but the light started flickering and turned off. He wanted to run off to his truck, but he didn't make a mental note of its direction. He didn't care and just decided to run away from the graveyard as fast as he could while there was still a little visibility. He picked a direction and sprinted at full speed. After about two minutes of running at full speed, he collided with a tree trunk. He realized he had run into the woods on the far side of the graveyard. You can't run, Rob. You shouldn't have disturbed me, the voice said again, really angry this time. But I was doing my job, clearing out the weeds, nothing more, Rob replied. Just then, he felt a sharp pain in his leg. He looked down to see a root sticking up out of his left foot. He slowly raised it and started hopping away, trying to outrun the voice. Well, you shouldn't have done that, the voice replied. This time, it sounded like there were multiple voices. As Rob kept hopping through the woods, he put his hand on a huge tree trunk and a metal gravestone sign shaped in a cross with pointed edges flew up out of nowhere and impaled his hand, pinning it firmly against the tree. He screamed with pain this time. The sign was so big that it almost cut his hand in half. Please, please, I'm sorry, Rob said in pain. Don't bother apologizing. This time, it felt like the trees had voices and the whole forest was talking at once. Just then, six decaying arms shot up just below Rob and started pulling him down. He held on to the tree and tried to kick the hands away, but they seemed to be made of metal. The arms overwhelmed him and pulled him down. Rob screamed. For the final time, half of his hand, still pinned to the tree trunk, dripping with fresh blood.